Welcome to week seven. Did you guys notice any difference in your garden? Well, you guys should start to see some dramatic growth in your plants, especially now that we are three weeks into our flowering cycle. If you guys feel like your tents are starting to get a little crowded, don't worry, this stretching period will end shortly. Uh, but you should uh, be seeing some signs of fruiting and flowering within your crop. We are gonna start off the week as we always do by doing our little routine of changing out our reservoir, replacing it with fresh water, and then putting in our nutrients for week seven and pH balancing it for 5.8. We'll also keep cutting off any dead leaves and unwanted branches. This week is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to do, but I do want to talk about a topic that could be important to you. I'm talking about pest control. Uh, we absolutely do not want any insects in our indoor grow. The only good bug is a dead bug. Because it could be a mess in our house, plus it's also probably harmful to our grow. First off, I want to talk about a few simple habits that we can have ourselves to help avoid having pests in our grow. We can avoid letting our pets into our grow room. Pets like dogs or cats can accidentally carry spider mites, aphids, and other insects into your grow. So keep pets away from your grow tent. Another habit is that we ourselves can accidentally bring in pests from the outside. I recommend changing into clean clothes before going into our grow room, especially if you've been outside. If you notice some insects in your garden, we recommend getting a few sticky traps and sprays to control any minor or major infestation. Once you get bugs, it's extremely difficult to eradicate it entirely. The best course of action is to control and minimize the breakout of any pest. Another thing we can do is we can use preventative sprays in the veg cycle like neem oil. Neem oil is an organic compound that naturally repels aphids, spider mites, cabbage worms, beetles, leaf miners, ants, and caterpillars. Sticky traps placed on the floor near the plants and hanging near the top will prevent aphids from infesting in the beginning. Let's take this one step further. Let's say we're in a situation where we do have a pest problem. What are the steps to getting rid of them? Uh, the first step is to identify the insect. Let's start with aphids. Aphids are usually gray but can range to any color. Regardless of the colors, aphids will feast on any part of the plant by biting into leaf, stem, and bud while sucking the life out of your plants. Once attached, the aphids become stationary and fairly easy to spot. A 10 times magnifier will be sufficient for positive identification. Another insect that we should know how to identify are spider mites. Spider mites are less than one millimeter in size and vary in color. They lay small, spherical, initially transparent eggs. They generally live on the underside of leaves where they may spin protective silk web and they can cause damage by puncturing the plant cells to feed. Spider mites are hard to identify, but you can see that they're there by the effect it has on your plants. After a spider mite infestation, you'll start to see little dots appear on your leaves. Plus, the spider mites will also leave a very fine silk webbing around your plants. The last insect I wanna help you identify are white flies. White flies are tiny little white insects that feed off your plant cells and live underneath your leaves. Mature white flies are easy to spot. They'll buzz around your plants and leave dusty, dirty gray spots on your plants. White flies can be dangerous because they can carry disease from one plant to another. When we have identified what insect is in our grow, we can effectively eradicate them. Uh, some of these treatments do work on multiple kinds of insects. Luckily for us, aphids, spider mites, and white flies are soft-bodied insects. Soft-bodied insects are susceptible to oils and soaps. What that means is that if a soft-bodied insect comes into contact with an oil or soap, their bodies have no natural defenses against the liquid from being absorbed into your body and killing them. This makes neem oil sprays and soap washes very effective against insects. When using the spray, we want to go over the entire plant, especially under the leaves where a lot of these insects like to congregate. We also want to spray our crops repeatedly in intervals of five 
days. Uh, we want to do this because most of these insects have a lifespan of five days. By spraying our crops every five days, we prevent these insects from reproducing in a comfortable environment. Cooling down your grow tent is also a smart way to go. White flies and aphids will slow the reproductive cycle in cooler temperatures. Along the way, you'll run into some treatments that are going to be ineffective. Uh, one of these ineffective treatments is introducing ladybugs to your grow. Uh, most of the times, ladybugs will tend to fly into your grow light and kill themselves. That's bad for our ladybugs and bad for our grow light. Uh, if, your if your pest problem continues to persist, the best course of action is to start all over again. I know how hard it is to throw away all of your hard work, but it is the only way to guarantee a pest-free grow environment. There's a lot more we can go over on insects, but to keep things from getting overly complicated, I'm going to keep it short and simple. And with that lesson over with, that rounds out our entire week seven, which means we are done for the week. Uh, we will pick things back up on week eight, but until then, I will see you guys later.